the marketplace. But I mean, we always get questions on Fiat jet ski. It is not in market yet, um, so stay tuned for that. And we talked to Olivia and last night about uh, Fiat snowmobiles as well. So we're going to really expand the brand here shortly. But uh, anyhow, thanks for joining us, guys. This is a big day not only for the Fiat brand. Obviously, this is the next chapter of uh, a very cool story here in the United States and NAFTA, but for, for SCA in general. This is a big product launch that we've obviously put a lot of time and effort and energy into, and it's the first car that we've designed collectively with our counterparts in EMEA that not necessarily was just designed for North America, but it had this market very much at the, at the front of their mind. So I think you'll appreciate it not only in the style and the design, but when you get on the road today and uh, get a chance to drive the vehicle. So what we had to be cognizant of is remaining true to the core pillars of the brand that we set out four years ago. And, and you can see the monkey so design is quite obvious. This is very much a 500, but in a much larger package and a much different package. So we're true to the design. Um, thoughtful innovation, we want to provide technology that the consumers appreciate, um, expect in a vehicle, but not go over the top, right? We've, we've learned that there's a, there's a point of giving them what they need and then giving them too much and it becomes nice to have and it gets a little bit distracting. So we're, we're, we're cognizant of that as well. Individuality, we, we pride ourselves on this. If, if, if nothing else, we're consistently trying to stand out in the crowd. We are not a commodity. We don't want to be an appliance on the road. Um, so individuality is a big deal uh, for this brand. <clears throat> and that continues with the 500 X. Responsible engineering, so think fuel economy, all-wheel drive in this case with the rear disconnecting axle, safety, things of that nature. Again, always at front of mind for the brand and accessibility. Back to my comment on not being a commodity, we want to provide a vehicle that's accessible to all, but it's aspirational. It's not a grocery getter. It's not going to take you just from point A to point B. So a lot has happened ahead of the launch of this vehicle. Um, you know, we had, as you guys see on the video, last year was our best year in the United States with over 46,000 vehicles sold. Uh, best year in NAFTA, north of 50. That's three years in a row that we sold over 50,000 vehicles. And uh, that's a pretty significant number for us. Um, and again, continuing to grow. No pressure on myself and the team, but, uh, but we, we obviously have to beat 2014 numbers. And with this product, we, we, shouldn't have, we shouldn't have too many problems doing that. Um, some cool stats if you look. 87% of the consumers that buy Fiat's today are outside of the FCA family. So almost nine out of 10 did not come from a Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram. So from a corporate perspective, while the volumes aren't massive and we never set out to be a mass market brand, all that business, it's, it's safe to assume the majority of it we would not have had. So that's a big step for us. And then the market awareness, again, this was basically from, it was from the ground up along with the studios um, and that continues to grow. Actually, 50% of here is now 57, as you see in the video. But the, the, the bottom section is what we pride ourselves on. Again, if you're not going to be a commodity, you should over-index things like household income, which were 20,000 better than the competitive set, and the average age of the consumer for the yeah, is 47 years versus 52 in uh, the competitive set. And that five-year gap, as you guys can appreciate, is pretty significant. So what do we do next? How do you, what, what is the perfect evolution from the Fiat 500 that we all know today to this beautiful crossover? That's what we really had to, to, to figure out. We didn't want to lose any of the emotion uh, that, was, um, that was brought out in the 500, the attachment to the vehicle, to the brand, but we had you know, to, to put it in a bigger package. You know, we, we've had lifestyle changes and the people that want to do business with us, but they absolutely love the Fiat 500. So that was our goal. This to me is a really, really cool sign and a very cool illustration. Yes, that is the original Chicachenko on there, but that kind of puts into perspective on how much bigger uh, this vehicle is in, in, in the evolution from the hatch to the crossover. So with the Icon, you know, this is a car, you guys ask a lot of questions, what are you going to do next? We have to be very cautious with that vehicle. Um, it is absolutely a classic, and, and when you start to touch that car, the sheet metal can get a little bit too cute, you can lose your way. So we took a different approach, and you know we focused more on keeping it fresh by doing things like buzz bombs. So taking a step back, we had the hatch, then the cabrio, then we provided the yacht bar, so we had a high performance version. Um, the all electric, which is sold in California and now Oregon as well. But we've done things like these buzz models, and one we just introduced yesterday. So about a year ago, we rolled out the 1957, 
um, you know, to pay some homage to the original vehicle. And it was so successful that we decided to take it a step further, not only bring it back for another model year, which we historically do not do, but we introduced the cabin version, um, which if you guys haven't seen the press release went out yesterday, and the car is here for you guys to look at. It's just, it's just dropped in gorgeous. So as opposed to getting too in, you know, caught up with what do we do to the sheet metal on the, 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 the icon today because it's so classic, we focus on keeping the vehicles fresh by doing things like the From there, we went to the 500 Dodge. So this is, obviously you get the Italian style, it's there for sure, it's very European, but this is more of a functionality play for the brand. And you guys will see once you get in, in the drive, uh, the 500X, that one of the questions that's probably on your mind is how do the cars both live in the showroom? You know, they're both playing, you know, this car will play in small crossover, the L plays in the small compact MPV space. But you'll see from a drivability perspective, um, they're, they're night and day, but the functionality is the big thing. The L is absolutely, you know, a car that, you know, the lifestyle change, you have a child or another child, you have upgraded the size of your dog or dog, you need more space, that's the L. The X is a much different execution. <coughs> but, it had to be the halo. So this is the halo of, of the brand. So the icon is always going to be the icon. It's mother goose, it's not gonna change. The L will be there for functionality, but this is the vehicle that takes us to the next level. I've said it numerous times, it's the game changer for this brand. It's not only the next chapter, but it takes us to new heights and it puts us in a different light again. We're not gonna be chasing these mass, massive volumes and become a mass market brand. That's not who we are. We never set out to be that brand, but this opens us up to a significantly larger part of the site. So it's grown quite a bit, um, but the expected growth through 2020 is astronomically high. Um, what you're seeing is a couple of reasons. People are willing to come out of C-segment cars and D-segment cars and come down into crossover space. I think a lot of that's because there's emotion, um, especially in, in, in our offering. You know, we firmly believe we've got the emotion there. And then a lot of people are willing to come downstream from SUVs. So with everything we've packed into this vehicle, from the safety, technology, um, all-wheel drive, um, all, of the, all of the creature comforts you'd expect, a much larger offering, uh, and obviously a much more expensive offering we can bring down into a, a small um, slash compact crossover. So people will come downstream. And then on top of that, you have a lot of new entrants coming into the market at the same time. So you guys know where they are, you've probably already driven the car. So everyone's kind of rushing to this space. Um, that doesn't concern us at all. As a matter of fact, we welcome it because now we'll be out there marketing significantly along with about two other um, brands at the same exact time. And it's just going to draw more attention to that space. And at that point, we the best car will win. And in order for us to win that battle, it comes down to the ball. So these numbers to you guys might not mean a whole lot, right? You might say this is standard. Well, it's not. We put a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort into this. But this vehicle will be sold in over 100 countries. So we're here to obviously talk about the US and NAFTA. But this car will be sold in 100 countries. It's a true global vehicle. So the amount of testing is I mean, important, but beyond that, what we had to put the car through, the, the workout we had to put the car through from a geographical perspective, uh, making sure the all-wheel drive was capable everywhere in the world, those types of things, that's what's going to take us to the next level, and we absolutely have to deliver a world-class quality vehicle. Everything else, we're comfortable with. We're comfortable with design, we're comfortable with everything that we offer from a feature and benefit perspective, but we absolutely have to win the battle here. This is the top of mind for the brand and for the company um, to ensure that that happens. So, in summary, for, for, for my section, straight, stay true to the heritage of Fiat. You know, Fiat's been around for a very, very, very long time. Um, and we did that, and it shows in the design of the vehicle. And to me, this is the perfect evolution from the Fiat 500 into the crossover, the 500X. Um, there's a ton of characteristics that are the same, but again, now it's a larger package, but just much more functionality. Um, you know, you get some of the blind spot detection, uh, rear backup camera, rear cross path detection, front or collision warning, again, all wheel drive, nice gun metrics, all these things that are first for the brand. Um, it allows us again to, to, to get into some more of the substance and, and allow us to grow. So, 